Carson. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Nearly 10 years ago, one summer's day, I remember sitting in a stifling hot room looking at a photograph of a very cute, blonde four-year-old boy who was beaming up at the camera. Nothing remarkable in that, you would think. And I expect many of us have similar photographs of our own children smiling and laughing at the camera, just as they should be at that age, making happy memories. The difference on this occasion was that I was in court, sitting as a magistrate. The photograph had been taken by a police officer and the little boy had an enormous black eye. He had been trying to protect his mother from being attacked by his father, but had strayed too close to a flailing fist. Just four years old and already subjected to more emotional and physical trauma than most of us can imagine. Domestic abuse is a crime and a, an abomination against victims and their families, and it's a crime against our whole society. I've been lucky. I've never personally experienced it but other members of this house have, and have spoken incredibly movingly about their experiences. I will be supporting this bill today, and I'm proud that this government is taking this lead, and I pay tribute to all those involved in the development and drafting of this bill. It's remarkable <clears throat> to think that until now, there has been no cross-government statutory definition of domestic abuse, and no commissioner to give voice and prominence to this issue, and to hold government to account. I welcome those measures and the trial of protection orders and protection notices and the extra cross-court safeguards in the justice system, which will give more effective protection to victims and their children, and explicitly whatever their immigration status. And I very much welcome the legislative inclusion of Claire's law. I would also like to take a moment to recognize the pioneering work of my right honorable friend, the member for Maidenhead, who worked tirelessly for this legislation and to ensure that coercive control would be included for the first time. In Hartford and Stortford, we are fortunate to have Future Living, a charity founded and run by the amazing Sandra Conte, which provides outstanding community support and services for both victims and per perpetrators of domestic abuse, male and female alike. Everyone who meets Sandra and knows what she and her colleagues do at Future Living become evangelists, and I'm no different. Unapologetically, I use this opportunity to encourage the government and our local authorities in Hertfordshire to continue to provide them with the support and resources they need to do their vital work. Particularly as today, Sandra's told me she's seeing a significant increase in cases, particularly where a separated, abusive parent is using the COVID crisis to keep children away from their victim, flouting contact orders. And we do expect even more of an increase in demand for their services as we come out of lockdown. I only truly understood the dynamics of domestic abuse for the first time after I experienced the training given to magistrates. It opened my eyes and completely changed my perspective. And it's vital that those involved in policing and the justice system have rigorous training so that they can recognize the abuse cycle from subtle control to murderous violence. And the fact that the most dangerous moment for a victim is often when they leave the relationship and try to regain control over their own lives. Domestic abuse is a dangerous and destructive cycle. It was around 10 years ago when I saw that photograph. That little boy will be 14 or 15 by now. And what I wonder most is whether he spent his childhood in that environment or whether things might have changed for him. Perhaps his father received the justice or indeed the help he needed, or perhaps his mother managed to escape. Or, perhaps, or maybe, and heartbreakingly, he is condemned to repeat the cycle of control and abuse that he grew up with, knowing no different and believing that that was normal family life. Madam Deputy Speaker, I support this bill because I think it will help children like him, and it's a privilege to be able to contribute to this debate. Thank you.